Okay. Welcome back to Base Hits and Banter. You guys, you banties, you're out there waiting, and we decided, hey, we're coming back for you. I am one of your hosts, Sam Fisher. I am your other host, Haley McClinney. What a pleasure it is to be here. Good golly, man. It has been a while. We, listen, I think that we do owe the people an explanation, like, where you been? What have we been doing? I think that, you know, we should just, like, fill in the banties. Yeah. Um. Well, do you want to start with the fact that, like, we both don't play softball anymore? We're just going to dive into the deep end here, folks. Like, full-on cannonball backflip straight into 10-foot deep waters. Um. Yeah, Halo and I retired from the sport of softball this summer we did like we a did. month ago we went out with a bang we went out with a bang we went out together it was fun i think mm-hmm. i think it would be interesting for our audience to kind of hear what our thought processes were just because yeah. i think they were a little bit different but a little bit in this a little bit the same i yeah. think for me like for me it was kind of like a last minute decision on retirement i had kind of gone back and forth for the past few years since playing in in tokyo and really just deciding if I was going to try to make a push until 2028. And um, I think with all of the opportunities that I got off of the field this spring um, and summer doing broadcasting, doing this podcast with you and hanging out with you so much, um, as well as working for AU full time, I finally felt a way to still be involved with the game without having to put my body through so much pain mm. and suffering and torn things you know that come <laughs> with playing a really good yeah. sport um and I don't know like people say when you know you know like I knew like mm-hmm. as soon as it came into my brain this spring um and going over to play in Italy this summer I was like you know what like I'm good like I've done enough this is great yeah. and what better feeling to have going out other than peace and that was really cool and I know you have a lot of fun and exciting stuff going on off the field too which is I'm sure factored into you wanting to step away after this season as well yeah I think that one thing I know that we have in common is the one you know you know and I know that when we started having because I made this decision after last season like I knew for a while going into this year that it was going to be it um But when you and I started talking about your career in Wichita when we were playing AUX, it started to really feel like from you the same kind of like, you know what? I think I know. I think, you know, when you know, you know. Yeah. And because everything that you were talking about feeling was things that I was feeling too. And um, as much as I wish I could play softball until my bones are dust. (laughs) Quite literally. Quite literally. Um you know, that there, there just was this kind of overwhelming feeling of like, to the point where people would say like, oh my gosh, no, like play longer. Oh, you still have more in you. And I was convincing them, no, I'm done. Like that, the way that I couldn't be convinced was when I was extra convinced, you know, because when do you, when do you say like, it's not, of course I want to play like, sure. Yeah. You know what? I'll keep going. But no, I was like, I'm at, no, I'm at, like actually done and I'm ready. And I've talked to myself a lot about it and we've been so lucky. And I, yeah, it just, man, what, and we were on the same team to go out together, like sob fest, no, super sobbing. And we're just, I know we're really lucky to, to kind of do something on our terms like that. Yeah. I, and a lot of a lot of professional softball players don't get that opportunity. And I think how lucky are we to be able to like say when we want it to be done? There are so many players out there because there yeah. have not been enough opportunities in the past. I mean, think right. about how long that you played, you know, going back to the MPF and all of that. Like mm-hmm. think about how many people just weren't offered contracts. And yeah. like you think your you think your softball career is gonna end and then you yeah. just don't get offered a contract and your career ends. And that's totally just it. It's like quitting cold turkey yeah. for a sport that you committed, you know, decades of your life to. For us to be able to do that on our own terms, wow. Mm-hmm. But I also think, too, I think something that we're united on is, and this would kind of help us transition a little bit, I think, too, is like the state of where professional softball is yeah. right now. I know for me, 
really allowed me to be like, okay, I I really feel like I did my part. Like I I executed my purpose. Yeah, of my playing career, being able to carry the torch from what professional softball was when I graduated college to what it is now and the opportunities mm. that all of these young women are getting to continue their professional career and actually make a pretty decent living. Yeah. I, have no sh- I have no shame in saying that my first professional contract when I got drafted in 2016 was $3,000. Yeah. <laughs> Three. $3,000. Mm. You know, inflation's kind of crazy. You can't really live off of that. Sure. And so like for me to be able to like play as long as I did and see kids coming into professional softball. Now they're even making money in college with NIL and all of that stuff. It's just a completely different landscape. And I know that allowed me to really feel comfortable stepping away because of all of those opportunities. Totally. And you made such a good point that people are making more money now. Like obviously there's no $700 million Otani contracts that are being signed, but Yeah. yeah, yeah the, but the, you know, the, the perspective of look at the first contracts that we had and look at the contracts that players are getting now, like they are increasing and players are getting a little bit more of an opportunity to, to focus on softball. There's so many players that I knew that like, just couldn't afford to play anymore. Yeah. So it's like not getting a contract or not being able to play. Like there are so many reasons where players stopped prematurely. So, um, I know we're in a, we're in a good place and I know we're going to stick around the sport. We just won't be lacing up them cleats anymore. So um, kind of crazy. We're going to be plugging in these microphones. Yeah, we're plugging in these microphones. And chit-chatting. We're, we're chit-chatting. We're bantering about softball. And I will say one thing. Um, I don't know if you ever envisioned your retirement or anything, but I thought about it because as as you know, in uh, our second to last day of games, I, I pulled my hamstring running out of triple. <laughs> I got to say, I don't know. I don't, did you envision? I have a two-part question here for you. Did you envision hitting a triple, one, in your last nope. weekend of softball? No. Nope. And two, did you ever envision maybe ruffling those hamstring feathers? No and no. It's funny because I know you've dealt with injury over your career and different things here and there. And I know I've been very lucky to just have little knickknacks here and there, have things where like, you know, it wasn't a big deal. There wasn't anything that was like overly career ending or any, you know, nothing crazy. Yeah. And when I pulled that old hammy round in second, trying to leg out a triple, I mean, I was safe. You were but safe. I think if you would have told me that was going to happen a year ago, I would have probably been devastated. Yeah. But, but going through it and knowing that like my one goal, and I said it like as the season ended last year and like going into the off season and then prep for this year was I just want to empty the tank and by golly, if that's not emptying the tank, like my body said, that's literally it. You're done. So plus man, ha- yeah, you're the timing there. Yeah. Plus 30 points, baby. But, um, I mean, it did hurt. And my grandma has checked in with me once a week since then to ask how my hamstrings been doing and she's doing good. So, um, but yeah, I don't know if you envisioned if like if you had a vision and it went that way or it went differently or did you no, never really think about it? I never thought about it. And I think yeah. it's just because I it was so like when you know, you know, for yeah. me that I I just never really put a ton of thought into it. I just really wanted to stay present. And it's mm. I, I have a I, I think I'm going to continue to have a really hard time explaining to people what it's like to play in that game knowing it's your very last so weird that is such a even even when I was in college like you kind of have like you you are going to win or like win or lose if you win you keep going right in college and you just want to keep winning so that's your mindset like let's go win this freaking ball game yeah for us like it didn't matter if we won or lost like either way that is our last game that mental headspace was something I honestly wish I would have prepared a little bit better for, but I was just so like, I was trying to stay in the moment so much and trying to soak everything in with my entire family in the stands. East coast K dog is, you know, out there taking pictures and supporting like you get, you get so many text messages and cards and the gifts that we got from all of our teammates at AU. I mean, we were like showered with love. I never envisioned that. Like that made me feel so loved and appreciated. Yeah. Um, but going through your at bats that entire weekend, that was like, I 
there is a little bit of pressure, but there's not. It's like, I've played this game for 20 years. Like, my career is what it is at this point. It's not going to be right. by a weekend. 100%. But you still want to hit for the cycle. I'll be. And you want to hit a home run. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That was, I don't know how you felt about that, but that was such a weird, crazy headspace. That's such a good in. point. Yeah. Like, cause that, that goes to like mental health, like adding pressure to yourself or adding, you know, things that maybe don't belong there. And I really, I honest to God think that like, because I pulled the old hammy when I went into for my last at bat, mm -hmm. I was just thinking about don't, hurt yourself more. <laughs> like, yeah, I wasn't thinking about it. I knew it was the last step bat. Like I knew going into my, which was the first step bat of the game for me. I knew it was my last at bat. And it, I think it just was so poetic because I let off the inning. So I got to hear a lot of my walk-up song Rocky like a hurricane was rocking. And I was just like, Sam, see a good pitch. You've seen denim, you know, a, a good chunk of times over the last few years, just see a good pitch. And I got to three and zero in the count. And I thought, are you about to walk for your last oh. That is so silly. I didn't walk one time in Chicago. Yeah. Did you not? Not one time. Not once. No walks. So ergo, I'm like, is this really how it's about to go down? I'm going to wow. go hold the first base, but three, three, oh, pitch was oh. a strike. And then I was like, okay, Sam, you're meant to like go out in a hitter's count. Let's do it. So, yeah. Yeah. But Were you auto swing. Were you auto swing that three, one? I think so. Yeah. Luckily it was, I like, don't know the answer because it was a strike to go after, but like, I think I was probably going to go for it no matter I love what. That. I, I love that so much. Let, but yeah. yeah, it's, it is, it is weird. Like knowing that you're going to get called off the field. Like you had your moment where you ran in from center field and everybody got to just cry and clap and you know, Frick. that was a lot. Yeah. Well, I had to, I had to get myself together because you, we had pulled you early in the game. So yeah. We were like, I was sobbing. Our <laughs> friends were sobbing. Like, Sasha's yeah. sobbing. Aubrey Leach is sobbing. Like, we're uh, all sobbing. And then we're like, okay, yeah. wait, we still have to like lock back in and go win a ball game. And we ended up winning by a lot. We, we did. did. Also, great. it was a great That game. was so great. That was oh, so great. And I so do beautiful. apologize to everyone on the gold team, but like, we had to win. It was, Sorry. it was already written. It was, it was written. And we went out on a, on a really good note. So, yeah. Um, I will say I was um definitely auto swinging in the hit that I got that game Obby. off of Rachel. So yeah, smoked. Yeah, smoked. Ugh, um, spe speaking of Rachel Garcia, do we want to mention yes. that she's coaching at Higginbotham? We put people first. Our specialists are here to serve you, the people you care about, and your success. Insurance, HR, and financial services, inspired by you. Yeah. In USA Softball's SoCal and Tokyo exchange, her and Ali Aguilar, so two casual Tokyo Olympians, yep. daddies, yep. they are taking an 18 and under team from Southern California and going to play in Tokyo against so cool. a Japanese, like Tokyo regional team. So how, cool. How cool just, is that? Can you imagine? You're just like, oh, I'm just jealous. Taking a trip. I'm yeah, jealous. Yes. Absolutely. Like, I'm jealous. For those kids that get to go, and also that they get to go and hang out with those studs. Come on now. And Allie please Aguilar can come back and coach me right now. No, a hundred percent. Right now, and I would be I, one of the best middle infielders the world has ever seen. You said it, lefty and all. Unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. Who cares? Who cares what hand yeah. you threw the ball with? If you're going to no. coach by Ali Aguilar, you're going to be. Yeah. Nothing matters. Um, so that that's really cool for. That's going to be great. For those kids. Experience. Yeah, yeah, good experience for those kids and. And shoot, coaching that like how cool for for Allie and Rachel to go to go and do that. And we've got we've got more things that's happened in the past over the summer because that's coming up the exchange. But mm -hmm. uh, our U18 team, they won the World Cup in Dallas. So they punched their ticket to the World Cup in 2025. Same with our men's fast pitch team. They did that in OKC at Devon Park. So they were out there. They you know, they said, this is our turf and we're going to win. We're going to win the softball. So, you know, and then what about, you want to talk a little bit about um, some USA softball players, uh, how they did elsewhere in the pro game uh, over the summer? Yeah, there were so many athletes from the the team that went over to Italy and played in world championships that were all over the place. We had yeah. a bunch of athletes play in Athletes Unlimited. I mean, Amanda Lorenz won it. So kudos won it. to Mandy softball. Yep. Um, she put together a, a great year and it, it, it's awesome to 
to kind of see that because she was struggling a little bit when we were over in Italy, mm-hmm. just like trying to get her swing swing right. Um, and to watch her like really focus in and like mm-hmm. lock in on her mechanics and um you could kind of see her mentally going through like the ups and downs of everything, mm-hmm. but she stuck with it and like it was just really awesome for her to to come out on fire and win some games at AU. And I know yeah. I know that really helped her like give her a lot of confidence back. So that was that was really awesome to see. It's um, a good example too of like of you know, people talk about slumping where it's like you can pick if you're having a hard time, like you can pick with the direction you're gonna go. You can either let it take you or you can just, you know, flip the script and look at look at, you know going out and there was nothing that she couldn't hit this literally summer. nothing I, yeah. I i every time i swear she was up to bat every time it was either a double in the gap or a home run. you like, just and you felt it you just felt you, it yeah you felt it like everything happens yeah. before it happens like you knew it was gonna happen <laughs> for her and it, it it was honest it was a pleasure to watch um just yeah. as like a fan of softball like i love watching good hitting like i watch oh. Like we both watch major league baseball games postseason baseball oh. is coming up and i know we're both excited about that but, october like, there's just something so pure about watching good hitters hit. And I yeah. think that was what was really cool about Amanda doing what she did. And Love also that. too, like, I think we should point out that to your point on the slump thing, like Amanda wasn't necessarily getting the results in Italy that she, that she wanted, but she totally. barreled up so many balls. Yeah. And so like, if you keep doing that and having that consistent approach, eventually that ball is going to have to find a hole yes. somewhere, either on the field or over the fence. Yeah, if you're seeing the ball that well, like the stars will align at some yeah. Point. So. And we've talked about this before on uh, many occasions where it's like it's all about how you want to look at it. If you want to look at an zero for three game with three lineouts as a bad game, then that's 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 on you. If you want, but you can look at it as a good game where it's like yes. you know what it doesn't have. I don't have the results on the stat line, but man, I smoke those balls, and I feel I want to be right there. That's where yes. I want to be. Stop looking yeah. at your freaking stats knock it off period period <laughs> they don't matter they don't matter no. they don't matter we also um, ha- had you go you go oh i was just gonna say like we had there were there was team usas everywhere yeah all over the field um yeah. at au you had obviously amanda you had hannah flippin mm. one of the great utility defenders of yeah our, um you had sis bates one of the great short stops home run hit Home run hitting Sis Bates, who yeah. we had a lot of conversations with just about like her offensive approach and like watching her after playing with her for the last few years, watching her take control over her power swing, like not slapping, um, like being willing to sit in the box and in an uncomfortable count and being like, no, I trust my swing and her standing oh. from that to watch her have success this season, I think was really cool. Um, and I got yeah. to hit behind her a lot too. And just like, watching her approach and her her mental just i softball iq and her preparation it was that was uh a truly a, pl- a pleasure to see and, and it's cool because she sis is is a world-renowned defensive specialist and yeah. she could have and and like nobody talks about her hitting because she's obviously mm-hmm. so great on defense but maybe the hitting didn't always match up to her defensive mm-hmm. play and she could have said, yeah, you know what? I'm good just being known as a defensive specialist. But she said, you know what? No, like I don't want people to discredit my hitting. And like you said, she took it in her own hands and she went and she had the best hitting season that I've seen um, this year from and her. How, how cool for a kid that's a few years out of college to get to make that many strides. I don't I don't feel like you see that very often in the professional league it's kind of like you come in who you are and maybe you improve a little bit but right your whole identity r- rarely ever changes as a player yeah. and for for sis to be able to do something like that I think that's really cool and I think as more professional softball opportunities you know start coming up with AUSL and We're gonna all see of that, that stuff like you're gonna see that and those are yeah. gonna be like really great storylines and really great lessons for yeah. young kids to be able to learn and emulate and be like oh wow like sis was an incredible power hitter and she's 25 26 years old like right. i'm 12 maybe i should be patient you know maybe like, yes. you know like there are so many good things that that we can learn from that jesse warren that. also yeah a big shout out there yeah were, I, i'm missing i'm missing someone i know meg framo obviously meg Fr- oh my god so yeah scary. she struck me out and everybody else too Constantly. so I, yeah no wonder i put that out of my brain yeah, we we had a lot. We had a lot of people play AU. We had some uh, WPF players play 
uh, with USA this summer. We had Janae Jefferson and SJ. They played for the Smoke. They won the championship like for two two years in a row. Um, They're animals. You can't ball. keep those two off of base. Honestly, no. you can't. No. Don't throw it anywhere around the plate for SJ. And if no. if Janae Jefferson has the opportunity to take extra bases, she's going she to. Will. If the ball goes in the outfield, it could be a ground ball directly to the left fielder. It's a double. Double. Easily. Double. Automatic. She's, double she's with insane. No pulled hamstrings. No. She's straight up she, double. she did not. That I know of. That I know. I don't want to break any news here, but I don't. I think Janae's hamstrings are are intact. I love it. Yeah, there's there's a ton of good softball all around, and it just makes me excited for what's coming for next year. You know, there's a lot to talk about in the youth side. There's a lot with you know the HPP we've got you know coming. Um, yeah. the big event in Florida in December. Like, there's just so much good softball. Even though our season's over, well, <laughs> our, our careers are over. Our season of softball life is over. Um. But wow. I just get depressed. I don't know. Yeah. No, I think we have to end the podcast. Yeah, yeah, I think we have to so. stop talking now. No, but I think, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of softball for us to talk about. And, you know, in season two here of base hits and banter, we're going to talk portal. We're going to talk USA. We're going to talk college. We're going to talk everything. So this is just a little teaser of me and halo getting back and getting our cute little feet wet. And, um, yeah seeing you guys on the other side you know where we're just yeah people we're normal people we're just people we're normal people yeah normal people i'm thinking muggles um is that harry potter of course sorry no it's you should be but it's okay um kevin it's also i forget what kevin like the acronym kevin said but it's about video games how there's like just kind of characters in the background that just fill the space and that's what we are now um instead of like instead of like the people who are doing the action he's like no no no. you're the background where they're just like in the scene but they're not even doing anything that's us that's us just so bantering bantering and chit-chatting about all things softball that's right still happy about it but i think that we'll probably cover stuff you know relating to to the journey i know we'll still be tapping into our softball experience for the rest of time. Yeah, I mean, for sure. What a what a cool way to to you know, you end your career, you start a new one, but take all the lessons that you've learned from your playing career like I'm going to be like 60 before I've had more non-softball years than softball years. So that's like, you know what I mean? Like I didn't a, think about it like that. I picked up a softball when I was like 4 years old and I'm 34. So if you just look at it, like 30 years of my life has been softball. So yeah, it's, uh, Whoa. yeah, I'm going to have grandkids when I'm going to finally be like, oh, I've finally been a non-softball player as long as I was a softball player. That's actually insane to think about. Yeah, it's weird. That's insane. But we are using the lessons that softball has given us literally every Constantly. single day with what we're doing. Yeah. Constantly. And how, how freaking cool and how lucky are we that I... that? That that was our life for so long, and now we get to use it to make, I don't know, to make everything Pod- else in our off-the-field lives that much better. Yeah, especially the old podcast. Especially the old podcast. I can't wait. <sighs> like, this, we haven't even, like, touched college softball yet at all, but, like, oh, but there are, teasing you guys to come back for the next episode, there are mm-hmm. so many things oh, my that God. we have to talk about. Oh, my gosh. With the portal. With NIL with matchups with Oklahoma and Texas joining the SEC. And that schedule got released by the way and Oklahoma plays at Alabama in SEC play. Roll tide. Roll tide. I'm Dang. claiming it now. Claiming it now. Roll tide. But like there's so many like softball is in such a good spot from high school to college to pro to international men's women's everything. Like softball is All in it. such a good spot and we yeah. are very lucky to be able to cover it and banter about it. Ugh, dream job. Literally. Ugh. Halo, any uh any other closing thoughts before we let our people go? I wish I had something really witty to say, but my mind is just blank because the coffee hasn't hit. I was just gonna say I love you. Oh you do. <laughs> and it, it's just so fun to see you <laughs> and be able to chit chat back and forth on a microphone. Dude, let's the sport that has given us really our entire lives. Our entire oh. uh, all our friends are from softball. Everything. Uh, from softball. All of our friends. 
My like, fiance is from softball. Like, it's golly, amazing. Look what it's done for our lives. Yeah, Incredible. I've got like a softball up there on my in my little on my bookshelf. Like, so cute. Uh, what a time! All right, well, Banties, we're back. We're back. We're better than ever. Back. We're retired. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and we uh, we'll see you next week. Later. Bye. Team USA has brought me opportunities that I never thought I would have before. And I'm super humbled to be able to represent my country. There's so much talent in the United States playing softball right now. And we want to see the, the game continue to grow and prosper and develop. I want to develop not just men, but women softball as well. I want to see more girls like me playing this sport. I just hope one day that I can be somewhat mentioned like a Natasha Watley to help this game. I just remember like watching everyone like in the Olympics like, and you guys just representing this country and for me playing USA softball like I just want to do the same.